Dordogne. Lot et Garonne. These regions of France are steeped in tradition and history, but they're changing as a growing number of Brits move in, drawn by the beauty and the lower cost of living. And I'll have, I'll have a packet of Cumberland. A packet of Cumberland as well. Take care, guys. Have a good weekend. Cheers. Bye. The new arrivals are buying up and renovating properties, but cultures often clash. For example, when it comes to lunch breaks. I just don't get it. At the, the 12 o'clock, everything has stopped. Literally, they'll stop. Doesn't matter what they're doing, they'll stop, and then they'll till 2 o'clock, and they can't work because they're half drunk. The Union Jack is gradually finding a home in southwestern France. But the process of settling in is not without hurdles. Nicola and Graham Parker. She's an accountant, he's a handyman. They moved to France in 2022. Their picturesque country house, built in 1780, boasts outbuildings and a converted holiday flat they intend to rent out to visitors. Graham Parker's lifelong dream. He and his wife left Norfolk for a fresh start. After 38 stressful years working in England, he now wants a slower pace of life. That was the plan. In reality, he's working as hard as ever. Their gîte, or holiday flat, needs another bedroom. Currently, at the minute, we have three, and the most inquiries we seem to be getting is for a fourth bedroom. So, hence, building this. So it's going to be a bedroom with ensuite and access out straight out to the pool. Uh, and I've got just over a month to build it before they start coming. <laughs> no pressure. The couple needs to start recouping the costs of the renovation soon. Most of the holiday flat is ready to welcome guests. But which authorities do the Parkers have to register their business with? And what taxes will they have to pay? They still have a lot of unanswered questions. But first, they need to finish the renovations. Graham is still getting used to the fact that he pretty much has to do everything himself. The problem I have with French workers at the minute is we ask them to come and price jobs, we ask them to come and look at jobs, but they just don't either don't turn up or they turn up and then never return with a cost in or price. Um, we did want to bring in French people, but we're just really struggling at the minute to get them to do and come and do any work. The couple have 20 hectares. Graham wants the new pool to be ready by summer. He and Nicola sold their home in the east of England for 1.8 million pounds. That's over 2 million euros. A huge barn house that Graham had lovingly converted over the years. Now that their children are grown up, they decided to invest in a new home in France. Nicola practices French every day. Twice a week, she attends a language school in the neighboring village. The most difficult thing is the accent. Obviously, because being English, there's loads of sounds that we just don't have in English. So that, that's really difficult. Learning French takes up several hours of her day. Because we arrived after Brexit, you have to be able to speak A1 level French in order to keep your visa. So if you've got a working visa, you have to take a, a test, which is basically this book, and it's got samples in the back. Um, if you fail the test, 
depending on how badly you fail the test, they give you between 200 and 600 hours of free French lessons. But they can be anywhere and they can be at any time. Um, some people have to drive like an hour and a half to get to the lesson. I bring coffee. Yeah, I do. Yeah, I do. Yeah, I get a beer. So you can fit a... Uh, nine the last ten months in France have been far more stressful than they expected. There is a little divide between the British and the French. The, you know, there is some, something going on there. I think since Brexit, obviously, you've got the British coming over with their money and buying up all these old houses and, and renovating them. A lot of the French couldn't afford what we've bought, and I think that's where the divides come. Their new home cost 1.2 million euros. They can bridge the first year with their savings. These days, the region is so full of Brits, it's known as Dortogne Shire. Many of its historical buildings and houses are for sale. Demand is growing, and estate agents say there's a price war raging. During the pandemic, many people from France's cities also rediscovered the charms of the countryside. Steve and Helen Robbins are both butchers who originally come from near Oxford. They've been in France for more than eight years. Every Thursday, they set up their market stall in the town of Aimée. After several decades as employees, Steve and Helen have set up their own small business here, selling traditional British meat products. Two types of back bacon, <clears throat> natural or green as we call it in England, and smoked, and the same with the streaky. These are the type of thing you'd have in a bacon sandwich. English people and other nationalities like for breakfast with eggs and sausage. I'm going to cover that in now. In spring 2015, the couple saw a TV report about the southwest of France. They packed their bags, headed there on holiday, and promptly bought a house. We did it when we did. Otherwise, I don't think we would do it now. Because, well, we don't speak enough French to do it now. So you've got to be fluent in French. And, well, we would get by, but we're not fluent. <laughs> it was easier in those days. Uh, there was more leeway, they were more lenient. Uh, providing you could prove to them that you could support yourself and you weren't going to be state dependent and everything, they welcomed you because a lot of these areas around here 20 years ago were really, really poor areas and everything. And it's the British people that came and brought the houses and did them up and everything and then started putting life back into these villages. The majority of locals are elderly. There's been an exodus of young people to the cities. How do they feel about all the Brits who've made the area their home? Romain Menu says he gets on well with them, but he speaks English, unlike many other French people. There are English shops, an English hairdresser. In lots of shops, you're completely surrounded by English people. Some like it, others are less keen. That's what Aimé is like now. But Aimé is a special case. Many wealthy Brits have settled in and around Aimé. Nicola and Graham Parker live just 20 minutes away by car. They moved to France because they wanted a fresh start, but there were other reasons too. Coming from England, we see that and it is in trouble. It, the, you know, you've got strikes going on everywhere now. Yeah. You've just for, you know, you've got the nurses' strikes going on. The health system over here is meant to be far, far better. You used to have to ring the doctors. You could ring them Monday morning and All buy... All the appointments it was gone, gone by 8.30. 8.30, you couldn't get an appointment. Yeah. Whereas over here, you can, you, as far as we know, you can ring up, you can just turn up and, book and get an yeah. appointment. Apparently, the dentist you can just drive to, get your teeth done and drive back home again. Mm. Wow, you couldn't yeah. even get a dentist in the UK. No, no. 
Nicola is strolling through town with her mother, Patricia. She lives with them in the house next door. I need to get a key cut, actually, quickly. Mother? <laughs> oh, yeah. Need to get a key cut. For the post box, do you want one? Yeah, I'm going to key cut too. Because we've only got one. I've only got one. Let's go in here. I think they're doing the I'm going to use my key. Madame. Two keys, please. Two keys, please. Je m'occupe de Madame. Oui, oui, allez-y. Vous en prie. Nicola's father died five years ago. She's been looking after her mother ever since. Have a nice day. That's one you need to remember. Have a nice day. Bonjour. because I don't know what legal paperwork we need to do because we run the, we've got the G but you have to register your G with different government departments and you have to register for tax but everything just seems to um, you look you look online to see what you need to send off for something so you copy it all you send it off and two months later it comes back with this is missing or that's missing so then you have to start all over again and they say copy everything at least three times but it just it's, it's very slow Facebook groups for British expats are full of such stories slow application procedures complicated regulations and months of waiting for paperwork they blame the prefectures the state's representatives in the region Jan Sebastian La Montaigne is prefect of Dordogne. In the wake of Brexit, his staff suddenly had to issue 9,000 residence permits because the British nationals who were living here were no longer EU citizens, a fourfold increase. We had to develop a procedure that didn't penalize them too much and that simplified the process as much as possible. Of course, this didn't exist before Brexit. Uh, il n'y avait pas de démarche à accomplir. Nicola Parker is about to start an online French class. Bonsoir, Nicola. Bonsoir, Franny. Bonsoir, Neil. Bonsoir, Jen. Bonsoir. So, do you remember what a nasal vowel sound is? So, when... The class is practicing pronunciation. Franny, their teacher, is in England. Spelling, shall we? So, a vowel before an N or an M is nasal, and the N or M is silent when... Are you ready? En. 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 Chant. 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 Les chants, la compagne, les tambours. Très bien, le tambour. Tambour. Super, bravo. <laughs> The next morning, Steve and Helen Robbins are on their way to their butcher shop right next to their home. After around 40 years as employees, Steve and his wife have set up their own business here, selling a little bit and enjoying life. Due to their savings, they don't need to work too hard. After all, they did that already for decades in England. Tomorrow is market day and they need to prepare. Their supplier is a neighboring pig farm they make everything the British love, according to traditional English butchery. Back bacon for a classic English breakfast is always popular. They don't do back bacon, French uh, butchers. They, they do the streaky bacon, which is that, but they don't do the back bacon, which is that one. So uh, we, we have a, well, us and the other English people love it. <laughs> a growing number of French people are also discovering their products, they say. Once packaged, everything goes straight into cold storage. 
the couple suffered a major setback in July 2020. Out of the blue, a shard of glass in the dry grass started a fire in the butcher shop. We lost trade for a whole year. We spent all of our savings trying to live for that year and buying new, new equipment because we didn't have enough money with the insurance, so we had to use our savings for that. Graham Parker needs doors and windows for the Holiday Flats fourth bedroom. Nicola is going with him because Graham doesn't speak French. As a child, he struggled in school. He can't learn French because he's dyslexic and he, there's just no way he can, he can do it. He will pick it up over time, but he will never be fluent and he'd never be able to pass his test. He often finds himself in uncomfortable situations. One of my main ones was I went in to the builders' merchants and I stood next to the materials I wanted, which was just a couple of bundles of batten, and basically pointed at the batten and told them I wanted de of, of batten, and the guy just looked at me and said, no, no. So I, I just left. Bonjour. Bonjour. Um, just we need a uh, window, fenêtre, yeah. French yeah. doors, um, yeah. and a normal, just a normal plain entrance door. Okay. Do you have all the dimensions? Uh, I can do any. I can. I was going to show you on here. So I think um, I haven't built it yet. You see. Okay. So. Please follow me. I'm going to show you the windows. And the oh, doors. lovely. Thank you. Okay. There are some doors in one opening system or two opening system. Two open, please. It's almost 10 o'clock, and predictably, the painters haven't arrived. The ceilings in the main house are still stained from the water used to put out the fire. Firefighters had to drench the entire roof. So here we are three years on, uh, still not finished off. The painters were due to come back yesterday to paint the main salon in the house and then continue on through the house. But they never turned up. Uh, apparently they had an emergency. So, and they are supposed to be here today, but who knows what time. Come back in the window. Lovely, thank you. Graham has managed to get everything he needs. I'm slowly picking up some of the words, um, but this has actually been really easy. He's made it really easy. Oh, I got you. I got you. Okay. Yeah. 50% of his customers, says the salesman, are the many Brits who live in the region. They're slow to learn French. It's not easy. If they had more lessons, it'd go faster. But it's a very insular community. That's why we have to speak English. Otherwise, we wouldn't sell any windows. Just after 11, Steve and Helen's painters finally show up. Oh, God. Hello. 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 The damp spots are finally going to be dealt with. The painter admits the language barrier is a problem with the local Brits. It's just very complicated making yourself understood, explaining that they need to clear everything away, that it can take time, there might be a delay. We have so much work. They don't really understand. Nicola? Nice to meet you. Yvonne, Akitan Lifestyle Solutions. Graham, uh, yes, How do you do? I'm good. You? I'm fine. Thank you. 
Very nice place. Very nice. Yvonne Drolshagen is a financial consultant. She helps foreigners navigate the French bureaucracy. We were uh, we were in MA yesterday. Me and my mum we went into uh, to see the market. Yes. Um, and we got talking to somebody, um, and he, he he said, "Oh, you need a hand holder." I recommended you. Oh, that's <laughs> nice. <laughs> like, we're seeing you tomorrow. You tell me that uh, for 2023, renting out a gîte in France is, from a fiscal point of view, from a legal point of view, something quite special. And I will learn you a mm -hmm. first French word that uh, will be important for you. That is location meublée, furnished rental. Okay. The much needed introduction to French tax and tenancy law involves a lot of technical terms and exemptions. That is the first thing that you have to understand. Graham, however, mainly wants to know whether he'll have to take the dreaded language test. Today, as you have a visa, there is no obligation to have French lessons. Obviously, the biggest horror story for me was this whole... Learning French. Learning French yeah. thing. It was really... It, it could have been... Um, a make or break for me, because I, 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 I can't do... So we've... That's already put a massive, yeah. took a massive weight but off I've my shoulders. People on, I've seen people post on Facebook saying, I, I went and did my French test and I've been given 600 compulsory hours. So what? That, that is, um, I mean, um, you took today, you go for, you have gone for one year's mm -hmm. visa and the renewal will very likely be for another year, mm. okay? There are people in some situations, um, uh, they go immediately for three, four years visas. Okay. Then there is the question of Didn't the, even of know the they test. existed. Okay. So things are a little bit more complicated as, as, as what, you, what you might uh, hear. But I've, I've been a massive believer all my life that when people come to England, they should learn English. So why should, when I come to France, I should learn French. And that's the end of it. Yeah, that's true. That's, and I totally agree with that. But you will, I will. pick it up. We will get there. So yeah. I said, the income tax declaration, which is quite urgent. We the couple is happy to spend some money on the handholder. And they're confident that once Nicola passes the language test, things will get easier. Later that afternoon, their French neighbor, Catherine Moulinier, drops by. Yes, we put your arm here, this one arm. It must be really clean. Just after Nicola and Graham moved in, Catherine knocked on their door and asked if she could let her horses graze on their grounds. In return, she suggested giving Nicola riding and French lessons. Today I'm going out with my horse, Phoenix. Yeah, I've always wanted my own horse. I'd love one. But it's, a, it's the perfect solution for us because we get to have the horses without responsibility. <laughs> That's great. And I get to learn to speak French. Hey. Okay. Well, in French, he's marche. Walk. Marche. Because he's speaking French. <laughs> of course. Of course. Only for my And you say... Oh, when both sides are up for it, the English-French relationship can work. And when you want to go on the right, if you go to the right, what is gauche? C'est bon? Oui, oui, oui. Okay, just like. Uh, donc on va aller à droite ou à gauche, comme tu veux. The town of Dura, late afternoon. Regina is serving her regulars. <laughs> Steve and Helen meet up with their English friends here every Friday, just like they used to in the pub back in the UK. From time to time, Steve sells bacon here. The Café de la Paix is almost entirely British. Regina says three quarters of her customers are expats. We're part of their family and they're part of ours. Everyone knows everyone here. The right decision was made moving to France, even with all the ups and downs, the fire and everything else like that. No regrets, no regrets at all. 
Nicola and Graham are still hard at work. Nicola works five hours a day in the garden. Graham still has to get the gîte ready before the first guests arrive in three weeks. All right, go on, take that over there. I can't see any reason why I'd want to go back to the UK, really. I'd much rather be here in the sunshine. I'm living the dream, I really am. I love France, I love where I live, you know, how many people have got what I've got?